In this video, I want to talk about our Visual Studio setup for creating Blazor applications. So I want to talk about .NET 5, I want to talk about um, security warnings, your server options, and um, setting your project up so that when you make changes, your browser automatically refreshes. So first up, um, .NET 5 has been released recently, and I would recommend installing that so that you can use the latest Blazor features. Um, like for instance, in .NET 5, they introduced CSS isolation, um, which is a really cool feature. It's, it's great to have it baked in. Um, you can Google that to, to find out what it is, but just like takeaway is that there are new features in .NET 5 for building Blazor applications. So if you have the latest version of Visual Studio, then you have .NET 5. If you don't, you can open up your Visual Studio window, go to help, check for updates. This will spin for a couple seconds um, while it's checking for updates. And then when it finishes, it'll tell you either you're up to date or there's a new update. So if you have the latest version, you've got .NET 5. And the way that you can kind of see that is when we go ahead and create a new Blazor application, going to throw this on my desktop for demo purposes. When we enter the screen where we choose whether we want to build a server side application or a client side application, and, and we're sticking to client side applications in this class, this drop down is now here for choosing your .NET versions. So I have .NET 5 and the previous .NET Core 3.1. So I'm just going to make sure that I have .NET 5 selected before I hit create. This will take a second to create our project. Okay, so we got a cut. We got .NET 5 covered. So we have a new project that now has all of those features from .NET 5 in it. Um, I want to talk about your server options. So when you come up here and you press play, you are by default on Windows machines getting this um, IAS Express server. Um, this is one of Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft's products it's a server a local we're using it as a local server here to, to take our web pages and make them show up on this local host URL um, on this port number so this isn't something that you can access from other computers it's only on your local machine but it allows us to do web development in uh, a natural way uh, there are some features that if you just try and open your project your sort of HTML CSS JavaScript files in a browser um, there's some features that won't be enabled unless you're actually viewing them over a server. So that's what our server does here. Uh, when you pop that server open for the first time, you, you may get a security warning that um, this URL is not secure. If that shows up in your browser, you can just hit the, like in Chrome, there's an advanced button and then continue on. There, there's no real security concern here because you're doing local web development. Um, and if there's a pop-up that pops up for you that, that sort of asks you to um, accept a self-signed certificate, you can click uh, OK and go through the prompts there to get that set up. And then your warning will disappear in Chrome. OK, so pressing this button will open up a server. And if you're on a, a Windows machine, I don't know what you'll have on a Mac or a Linux machine off the top of my head, but on a Windows machine, you'll have two options. You have II Express, and then you also, or IIS Express, and then you also have an option for a server that's named the same thing as your project here. So my project is called Blazor Demo. If I click this and switch to that server and press play, I have now configured using a different server, um, and this server sometimes the IIS I have found with Blazor development um, can break without you even really touching the project um, and so this this other server I found to be a little bit more consistent um, for students in this class so it's the same deal it's a local server the the port number is different by default and you're gonna get this console window that pops up this is the thing that's running the server so if I go ahead and close this console window I basically stop running my application because the server is being shut down okay so we've talked about .NET 5 the SSL the security warnings the server options 
The next thing that I, I want to talk about and the last thing that I want to talk about is how do you set up your development so that your pages refresh every time you make changes. So right now, if I were to go into like index, I go ahead and pit, press play to start up my debugger and start up my local server here. I can see my application, but if I come in and I make a change, like I want to make that an exclamation point, by default, this is not um, going to show up in my new application here. Um, so what I would have to do to see those changes would be to close this down, start it up again, which is a really tedious process. So here we go. And it took us like a minute to just see that change happen. So what we can do instead is configure our Visual Studio to go ahead and every time we make a change, recompile, rebuild the application, and refresh our browser. So I'm going to go into Tools, Options, and then under Projects and Solutions, ASP.NET Core. If we come into here, the Auto Build and Refresh option allows us to choose um, the sort of configuration for whether or not it builds automatically and refreshes our browser. Uh, so I have mine set to auto build and refresh browser, browser after saving changes, which means every time I save a change, um, the Visual Studio project is going to try rebuilding the whole project and uh, try refreshing any browsers that are connected to the local host. So that's the option I recommend having set up. Hit OK. And then it's really important <laughs> to note that in the current version of Visual Studio, that option does not take into a take in um, does not come into effect uh, unless you are starting your project without debugging. So when we hit this plus uh, the play icon here, or we come into the debug menu and hit the play icon here for start debugging, or hit F5, that starts up with our debugger connected so that we can have breakpoints, we can stop and inspect the code, um, which is great. Uh, for debugging purposes, but because that auto build doesn't kick in here and refresh our browser, um, when we're doing development and we don't need the debugger, we're going to start up our project differently. So we're going to start it up with Control F5 or going into the debug menu and pressing Start without debugging, which starts up my application here. So I have that second server selected. So I've got this console window that's going to pop up every time there's a rebuild. And let's bring these side by side. Make a change. Give it a save. And we can see in my output window, a build was happening. So we got this build succeeding message. My console server popped up again, so a new server loaded up, and my browser refreshed. So I could change this again, give it a save. We see the, the output window starting up again. My server restarts, and my browser automatically refreshes. So remember, with this, to get this auto building and refreshing, we do have to start it out up without our debugger. So if we run into a situ situation where, okay, we got to a bug and we want to put a breakpoint in and debug something, we're going to have to switch from starting with without debugging to start debugging. Okay, and so that that's it for setting up your project. Uh, we looked at those server options, getting .NET 5 set up here, and, and getting our browser uh, auto-refreshing.